Good day. My discussion about low-carb, high-fat diet for endurance athlete. But before that, let me discuss a little about low carbs in kids. First, I will present to you the food pyramid that began in 1990, which promote eating rice, bread, noodles the most, and eating less fats. This is revised in 2000 and 2012 as Pingam Pinoy, having 33% of both carbohydrates and vegetables, and 17% for both protein and fruits. These dietary guidelines in nutrition with high carbs and restricting fat as an approach on better health and better performance. You can see that high carb is more dominant in our daily diet. In pediatrics, my opinion is you can do low carb for kids and still maintaining good healthy carbs. You just avoid the high glycemic ones. If you are not in a low carb high fat diet, my advice is you need to avoid grains, sugar, and vegetable oils. Grain is full of things that is a main propagator of chronic diseases. Refined grains have devoid of nutrients such as pasta, pizza, white rice, cereals, and bread. In a study on the effects of sugar, sugar has direct and severe effects on the immune system. By drinking one liter bottle of soda or by eating 100 grams of sugar, the reactivity of WBCs are reduced by 40%. WBCs perform the function of immune by killing bacteria and virus through the process of phagocytosis. Vitamin C is very vital for proper functioning of WBCs. When we eat sugar, it directly competes with vitamin C. As a result, less vitamin C enters into the WBC. Sugar does not help WBC to fight against pathogens and hence weakens their reactivity. So high glucose level in blood weakens the immune system by decreasing WBC reactivity. A study showing that low carb diet is more effective than low fat diet was seen in the New York Times. Copy of Time Magazine denotes the fat is better. Celebrities and athletes who are switching from their traditional high-carb diet to a low-carb, high-fat diet like LeBron James, Kim Kardashian, and Billy Crawford. There is also scientific evidence supporting low-carb, high-fat diet published in 2013 with the conclusion that low-carb diet do well in weight loss as compared to low-fat diet. The real benefit of real formulated ketogenic diet extends beyond weight loss. We now have data in the role of ketogenic diet in managing diabetes, prediabetes, cancer, PCOS, and neurological disorder. Low carbohydrate diets are more likely to affect global improvement in biomarkers of metabolic syndrome. This is a randomized study of a group of individuals with metabolic syndromes to have low carb diet or low fat diet in 12 weeks. The low carb diet outperforms the low fat diet group in terms of weight loss, fat loss, decreasing cholesterol, improving lipoprotein, insulin sensitivity, and reduction of leptin. Another effect of ketogenic diet is we see changes in fatty acid composition. Arachidonic acid is an important inflammatory mediator once it is acted upon by oxygenase. As we see that arachidonic acid is going up, we see a lot of inflammatory markers goes down. So we see that in ketogenic diet, 
it has an anti-inflammatory properties. Basic metabolism. Once you ingest a single meal of carbohydrates that will be absorbed as blood sugar, as we all know, we have a very little of blood sugar in our circulation, only one to two teaspoon in any given time. So the body will deal with these incoming carbohydrates. And if you are healthy, the body will be disposing that incoming carbohydrates by uptaking into muscle wherein it is converted to glycogen or is oxidized. Or go to the liver and converted to fat by de novo lipogenesis. It occurs in people with insulin resistance to a greater extent than those who are insulin sensitive contributing to dyslipidemia, oxidative stress, and inflammation. Insulin resistance manifests itself functionally as carbohydrate intolerance. People vary in their ability to metabolize carbohydrates. Those who are carbs tolerant will have more diet options. But those who are carb intolerant have fewer options. A major concern people have about low-carb, high-fat diet are their higher in fat, saturated fat, which is every now, everyone knows that these are harmful to us, but it is wrong. There are many meta-analyses done with the conclusion that there is no correlation of dietary saturated fats and heart disease. You see, as saturated fat levels goes down on a low-carb diet, despite two to three times level of saturated fat. So, if you are eating, a diet rich with saturated fat plus a lot of carbohydrates, you are in a metabolic state that you are storing fat in the, and that is harmful. Or with saturated fat, with no carbohydrates but with extra vegetables, you are now not in a metabolic state that store fat because of lower insulin response. Now you are burning that saturated fat as fuel. In ketogenic diet, at a cellular level, you are centrally changing fuel use. Most of us eat carbohydrates three times a day. We are more of a, a carb glycolytic driven metabolism where we re rely mostly on carbs. But to restrict those carbohydrates, the cell is forced to upregulate its ability to burn fat. Now you are primarily relying on fatty acid and ketones, using those as fuel. It becomes a fat based metabolism for better health, performance, and recovery. Ketone terminology In ketosis, this is a small hepatically derived energy containing substances derived from fatty acids that provide, that provide fuel to nearly every cell in the body. Nutritional ketosis, this is the process of accelerating production of ketones through restriction of carbohydrates marked by the blood levels of more than 0.5 millimole. As for ketoacidosis, this is a dangerous side effect of type 1 diabetes wherein ketone levels are more than 10 millimole. And keto adaptation, this is a process of shifting to using predominantly fat for fuel and will take at least several weeks, if not months, to fully develop. An experiment of a group of individuals that were starved has a keto levels of 5 to 6 millimole. They have a normal blood sugar levels to about 70 mg per deciliter. They are in a state of starvation ketosis 
and, and were infused with insulin wherein insulin drives blood sugar into cells. The blood sugar dropped to 25 milligrams per deciliter. In medicine, that level will put you into a comatose state. But these individuals who remain in ketosis, they have absolutely no signs and symptoms of low blood sugar. So having ketones as a fuel for the brain is a very protective against hitting the wall or bonking as the term used for athletes who run out of fuel for the brain when their carb store is depleted. Their body literally shuts down. It's only when you restrict carbohydrates that the level of ketones rise. We've learned that ketones are, are not just an alternative metabolic fuel that glucose is not available. Accelerated free fatty acid release to enable weight loss and endurance exercise. Ketones are more than fuel. They are regulator of metabolism, help promoting genes, reduces inflammation, fights oxidative stress, boosts insulin sensitivity, accelerates fat loss, enhances cognitive function, helps fight and prevent uh, cancer. For the le levels of ketones, an average person who is eating 100 grams of carbs per day is below 0.1 millimole ketones in the blood. This will increase in an overnight pass to 0.1 to 0.3 millimole. And if you fast for a week, it will increase to 5, five to 7 millimole, which is still in a safe range. A very low carb diet of less than 50 grams per day reduced level between 0.5 to 3 millimole. For ketoacidosis, this level exceeded 20 millimole. Going from a fed state to a nutritional ketosis by restricting carbohydrates in a healthy person who is not type 1 diabetes will never get much higher than 3 or 4 millimole per liter because insulin puts a break on that. So you don't have to worry about reaching the dangerous level. Effects of ketones. This is a clean burning fuel has less generation of reactive oxygen, increased antioxidant defense, greater, greater efficiency in providing cellular energy and regulator of gene expression. Ketones are signals affecting gene expression. This is a science paper that shows the mechanism by which ketones are acting through this potent histone deacetylase inhibitor which is the beta-hydroxybutyrate wherein it is synthesized in the liver from fatty acid and represents an essential carrier of energy from the liver to peripheral tissues when the supply of glucose is too low for the body's energetic needs such as during periods of prolonged exercise, starvation, or absence of dietary carbohydrates. In addition to its activity as energetic metabolite, beta-hydroxybutyrate is increasingly understood to have cellular signaling functions. We believe that athlete had an obligate need for carbohydrates in order to excel and perform. But this was challenged by Dr. Steve Feeney, who conducted an experiment with elite cyclists where he adapted them to a low-carb diet of less than 20 grams per day for four weeks. So you can see here the performance of each individual. The five subjects here, one is flat, before to, to after adaptation, 
there is no change in their performance. Time to exhaustion. Two of them went down. One went up and another went up dramatically. So people differ from one another or maybe there is only a four-week study that these people adapted and they needed a longer time to adapt. As humans, we have limited ability to store carbohydrates compared to the energy we can store as fats. In skeletal muscles, we can store 2,000 kilocalories of carbohydrates or 250 grams of carbohydrates or maybe more if you carbo load. Compared to energy we can store as fat, ranging from 20,000 to 100,000 kilocalories of fat in adipose tissue, depending on how fat an individual is. We cannot access it unless you've gone through some type of keto adaptation where you train your body to use that fat more efficiently. Well, Jeff Volek decided to extend the, the study of Dr. Finney, so they invited several elite runners in a lab. Were characteristic of uh, uh, elite male ultra endurance runners based on running times in competition, age of 21 to 45 years old. The primary criteria is that they have to follow a high carb diet of more than 50% or low carb diet of less than 20% for at least 6 months. The point of this study is that they are all well matched in age, training status, and almost identical VO2 max. So these are the habitual diets. For high carb, we have 60% uh, of carbohydrates. For low carb, 10 to 12% of carbohydrates. On day one, we did an incremental exercise test in the treadmill to determine their VO2 max. And on day two, which is the test day, they will run in treadmill for three hours with a two hours recovery. The sample of blood, skeletal biopsy, and fat biopsy, and also fed shake before and after exercise. How much fat can humans burn? In literature, humans can oxidize fat greater than 1 gram per day or 60 gram per hour. The usually highest is 1 gram. The usual range is 0.6 to 0.8. The result for the test subjects for their peak fat oxidation, the low carb guys had an average of 1.5 gram per minute, while the high carb guys had a 0.67 gram per minute, wherein there is a twofold greater increase of fat oxidation in low carb guys. Peak fat oxidation in literature. There is an overrange of exercise intensity wherein peak fat oxidation at 60% VO2 max is already in race phase. So if when we increase the exercise intensity, the fat oxidation goes down. So the test, the specimen result. High carb guys has an inverse U curve, while the low carb guys have a curve which is shifted upward and to the right, wherein their peak fat burning is much higher and has a higher exercise intensity. So during the treadmill run, you will use a high carb diet group has a mixture of carbohydrates and fat, while the low-carb diet group were 
getting 90% of fuel from the fats. Low carb diet group are stable in 1.2 gram of fat per, per minute, which has a twofold higher than the high carb diet. They took blood serum glycerol, wherein glycerol is a release into the blood when you're breaking down fat in the fat cells. There are twofold greater increase in low carb diet group, suggesting that they are breaking fat greater to deliver that fat to muscle for fuel. As for fatty acid, there are no different to both high carb and low carb group. For ketone levels, both group has an eleva elevated result but the low carb group has a twofold increase more than the high carb diet group so in summary keto adaptation is being impacted by both ketones as fuel alternative fuel especially for the brain wherein there is also a whole range of potential cognitive benefit associated the beta hydroxybutyrate as a signaling molecule or a fuel source that enhances performance, speeding recovery, improving overall health, improving body composition and power weight ratio, enhancing longevity that is important on athletes. So that finished my discussion and Additional research is definitely warranted for this uh, uh, low-carb diet and high-fat diet fat. This is me before. I am on CIPA. Doing races. best project 